Hi guys, okay, in this video, um, I just want to show you an example of uh, basically how to grow your company online. And um, if you watch my other videos, for example, right, this is not really a big case study or whatever it is. Okay, It's, it's no point for me uh, to show you like crazy outlandish numbers. Uh, if the normal person on YouTube, that I'm pretty sure you're watching on YouTube, right, uh, you see those numbers and you think that it's not possible for me, for me, right? So I'd rather show you small companies where if you look at the revenue, if you look at the numbers that come in, for example, you look at it and say, hey, that is quite manageable. I, I'm, I'm a person just watching a YouTube, a random guy on the internet, right? And that seems possible for me, right? So I want to give you that perspective of when you operate from a small company, for example, um, how, how you could potentially do this for yourself, make the type of money for yourself and build, you know, the type of company as well as the business that you actually want. Okay, so let me show you an example of a customer that we help. Basically, we run all of the advertising. They, we run their, uh, their Google, their Facebook, as well as their email marketing as well. Okay, but uh, so I'm going to, you know, go back and forth uh, with the screen just to show you, for example. Okay, but basically, I have a few PowerPoint slides, so stick with me on this video. Uh, and then afterwards, I'll show you a few numbers as well. Okay, so everyone wants to know the numbers first because, you know, numbers speak louder than words generally. Uh, but you can see here, for example, uh, let me refresh this for you. Okay, so just give, to give you context, right, uh, this is a business uh, based in Canada, but then they sell to the US market as well as the Canadian market, for example. Okay, they are a very, very small company. So imagine if someone, uh, the, the, the founders quit their job, they started this business basically during the pandemic and stuff and just tried to, to grow it uh, organically. Okay, so at, at the start, right, they don't have any uh, revenue coming in. So most of it is com coming from uh, pure organic. Okay, so let me show you uh, in the year 2020, for example, like a full year's perspective. Okay, a lot of the times uh, we are in the internet marketing space, right? You're probably in, in this uh, circle and echo chamber of like gurus and too many people talking. So you're mostly, you, you think that, hey, why am I uh, not a millionaire yet? Hey, why am I not rich yet? Stuff like that, okay? But you need to think of it as you're building businesses here and businesses take time to mature and stuff like that. Okay, so in the first year, for example, I, I did I did not, I was not here. I, was, I did not help uh, this business whatsoever. So, right, so they did uh, around 100K in gross revenue. Okay, this is revenue and it's not profit at all. Okay, so obviously not, not a big business at all. Okay, and then for, uh, for example, the following year, right, the business uh, basically 4X the business. Okay, and so this is when uh, I came in and basically, you know, tried to pump through marketing and stuff. Okay, but if you can see this, this sharp drop off here from November, December, basically uh, when you scale too hard and too fast, uh, usually the supply chain cannot catch up and stuff like that. And so if you know last year what happened, for example, there's supply chain issues, it's very difficult to get raw materials and stuff like that. So uh, in December, we wasn't, was, wasn't really able to sell any product at all. Today's video partner is Cinder. Okay, thank you, Cinder. If you need a solution to automatically generate your P&L reports, your balance sheet, and be aware of all your Shopify income and expenses, right? Cinder is an easy accounting software if you're running an e-commerce or SaaS business. Okay, Cinder automatically records all sales and merchant fees across multiple channels, right? Such as like Amazon, Shopify, eBay, Etsy. Okay, you pull all of that data into one accounting system, right? So imagine you're running an e-commerce store on Shopify. All of your sales data, your SKUs, price points, everything related to your transaction and sales data, you can pull that into Cinder. And then that data is organized within the software itself. Okay, so if you're confused about your accounting, Cinder can be a go-to solution for closing your books. You can import all your historical transactions, no matter how far you need to go, and generate all that data in one click, basically. Okay, so if you sync all your data, it's very, very easy. Okay, you also can reconcile uh, information from your bank accounts. So sync it uh, with Cinder and stuff like that, and you can basically get ready for your tax season. Okay, uh, I think one more thing that's very, very useful is that you actually can predict your customer demand and like forecast up ahead. Right, so you can take your monthly revenue data and conversion rate data from Shopify, right? You can pull into Cinder, Cinder does that AI or whatever it is, right? Then they can predict and forecast how much customers you're probably gonna get. And then you can, you know, supply chain, you can forecast demand inventory as well, okay? The software can also produce asset reports with up-to-date inventory on hand so that you can track all of your stocks from one dashboard alone, okay? Uh, they are a company that is backed by Y Combinator and today they, uh, they got a special offer for you guys, okay? You guys can use the link down below. You can save up to $40 on the monthly subscription. So they're giving you like one month of Cinder to use and they don't need a credit card from you, okay? So I've partnered with them and Cinder has a YouTube channel that they actually want you to check it out. <laughs> okay, so you guys check out the link below. Uh, there's a YouTube channel for free. You can check out some of their videos and stuff. And if you do need any help with tax and accounting, right, uh, you can have that as well. Okay, just a reminder, they have, uh, Cinder is giving you guys one free month of the entire uh, software and there's no credit card needed. So 30 days free is basically up to $40 uh, per month on the subscription, okay? So check it out, Cinder below and uh, back to the video. 
Okay, so that's a bit sad on, on that part. Okay, so you can see, for example, most of the time, like um, people don't really understand what it takes to, to get, you know, to grow a company and to see it scale uh, progressively, right? They just want to think that, hey, revenue just comes overnight. And a lot of the success that you see, uh, you know, throughout in the world, it's like, it's all overnight success. Okay, I want to show you how it looks like when you ramp up the actual thing. And uh, usually this happens, right, when you have product market fit. Okay, product market fit is when you start marketing and you become very good at marketing and then you really, really understand the customer such that when you put out a market uh, messaging uh, on your ads and stuff, they start converting like fire. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you uh, or some of you have experienced this before. When you put down an ad, right, you, it just rips. It just like absolutely just gets tons of sales. And the reason why that's happening, right, is because you're solving a very, very painful uh, problem in the market, for example. Okay, so let me show you some of the Facebook ad side as well. Okay, I'm gonna like this is boring stuff, but I wanna show you like a two month span because uh, the two month span is when the scale is happening, right? So for example, um, you can see uh, this is from October to November. Okay, this is uh, Facebook ads, right? So on Facebook, we only spend around 16K uh, of spend throughout that month. So obviously I, I, I do want to ramp up uh, more aggressively and faster, but a lot of the times, uh, the things you don't see, which is the supply chain, the supply chain just cannot catch up with the demand, stuff like that, okay? And so, okay, let me just show you. This is basically the top of funnel. This is the TOF campaign. Then this is the retargeting campaign. So you can see we're spending almost 30 bucks to acquire one customer, right? So every single customer that comes in is spending at 30, right? So getting around 500 customers. Okay, if you don't, if you have never been in marketing before, if you've never been in an acquisition role, you won't understand how difficult it is to get people buying a product at 30. Okay, to be fair, some job trippers can do it for very, very small amounts and stuff, but that's because they are probably selling uh, low ticket items and viral product stuff like that. This is not a viral product and this is not job tripping and stuff. So um, I would say it's a bit more difficult uh, just to get the customer, okay? But people don't uh, take that into consideration, okay? So uh, to get $30 cost per purchase, obviously is good, but uh, more importantly, we only care about lifetime value. We don't really care about um, upfront costs, but just try to reduce the cost of acquisition as much as possible. Okay, then on the Google ad side, we're also running Google ads. This is not very aggressive as well, but you can see here, this is um, October as well, the, the same time period, right? And you spend around um, 26K on Canadian. So 26 uh, plus 16, how much is that? I think it's around 40 plus, around 40K. So you spend around 40K uh, on two platforms to get back around 200K plus. Okay, so you, you can kind of estimate the, uh, the ROAS based on that. Okay, but, but this will not happen, right? If a lot of the other things in the business, like uh, the value proposition, everything else that is not ad related, okay? So people don't understand. People think that if you just run ads, you'll make money. That's not true. Uh, number two is that people think if you have any product to sell, for example, um, you can just uh, let it rip, you know, just, just spend uh, Facebook, Google, whatever, and then the thing will scale. But if you have ever ran, ran ads in, in any platform whatsoever, you know that's not the case, right? You actually do need to be good at what you do if you're not good at what you do, you're not going to make sales. Okay, so simple as that. Okay, so let me go into the PowerPoint presentation. I think you can kind of understand the numbers. Um, and you can see here, right, if, if you think about it, if you quit your job, whatever it is, right, you go from a business that just starts out, right, it's going to be slow. But if you build for the long term, you can see growth. And when you see growth, right, you know that this business is legit, right? So for example, this technically what you're seeing here is a good month per se, right? But these guys have been working at the same problem for like 18 months. So if you get 18 months to get to this point, is it worth it? I would think the answer is yes, but a lot of the times most people quit at month 13, month 12, for example, okay? So just to give you perspective, and um, I don't want to clout your judgment because you're watching a guy on YouTube, right? <laughs> you, you're technically trusting a guy on the internet and stuff. I mean, uh, I'm real, but you know what I mean? Take it with a grain of salt, right? So like the, the way I see things and the, the proposition is that if you look at a business and if you're running e-commerce or whatever it is, whatever venture it is, right, can you make... $150,000 uh, per month from it, for example. Because 150 k for example, if you go to any ordinary person and you say, uh, you can make 150 k this month, right? I would think any any normal person would look at that and say, that that is a worthwhile investment. That's a good business, right? Because people cannot think about 150 k it, It's a very big number for most people, right? So, yeah. So, yes, you actually can do it and you can do it very, very realistically uh, even though you're not special or whatever it is, okay? You just need to be very, very focused, okay? So an ordinary person thinks this, okay? So let me go into my presentation. Uh, give me one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, my presentation is going to be very simple. I'm going to break it down into a few things. So landscape of e-commerce, uh, some problems you might face as well as some Google Ads strategies. Uh, I've gotten uh, quite decent at, I'll say, Google Ads uh, th this past few months and stuff. So I just want to share with you some of the things that work and stuff, you know. Okay, so the landscape of e-commerce, let me show you. So a lot of the times, right, it always starts with a USP. 
Okay, the reason why a USP is basically a unique selling point. If you don't have a USP, right, uh, I just be honest with you, you're going to get completely destroyed. Okay, and so if you are doing a business, you don't want to get destroyed because uh, if you're getting destroyed in the marketplace, uh, your, your business is probably going to die out. Okay, so you must always start off with from the customer. Okay, what is the value proposition? How are we different from our customers? And so if you uh, think about uh, in business school, if you go to business school, for example, they call it Porter's Five Forces, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but basically, what is your competitive advantage? What is your moat? Okay, and how can you use your moat to differentiate against your com- competitors? Okay, people uh, in the make money quick online space, there's a, like a convergence between the make money guru people and then the, the real people who are doing real business. Okay, the real people who are doing real business, right? Like the Google, Amazon, Facebooks, right? Th- those people, right? They have extreme competitive advantage. That's why they absolutely kill it in the market. However, versus that, versus like drop tripping people or like short-term people, right? Most of the time, if you see, they never, they never max out their revenue, okay? So they always, like they can scale, they have a good month and stuff like that, but then they never reach a certain revenue level, right? Uh, a lot of the times you've never seen people doing like eight, 15, 20 mil, for example. Because number one, it's very, very difficult to do that. And number two, they don't have a USP, okay? So if you have a moat, right, you can scale past 10 mil per year quite easily. Okay, if you don't have a moat, right, normally you get stuck, like a lot of the guys in the space, you get stuck at like one, two, three mil, for example. And like after three mil, you're unable to scale because you ran out of people that you can sell the product to, basically. Okay, so this is uh, things that people don't talk about. Um, and when you sell short-term products, it's very, very difficult to build a big business, okay? You, you start scaling, right? And because there's, uh, you start scaling, your competitors see that you're making money in this space. They come into this space, and because you don't have a USP, you don't have a moat, right? You get destroyed, okay? So that, that is what, uh, I don't know whether you've experienced this before, uh, but this is the, mo- uh, the case for most people in the space, okay? Yeah, they're selling very, very generic stuff. Okay, so you don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, this case study here, for example, I'm going to show you is like you have to look at things from a year to year perspective. Okay, so are we growing month on month? Number one, are we growing uh, f- from last, for example, we, we look at this January, last January, are we growing month on month? Okay, so for example, this business, right, you saw just now, it was like 100K ref in 2020. Okay, it's not it's not really good, not really bad, but for a new business, right, I mean, it's solid, right? The next year, you, fo- you 4X the business. So you go into 2021. Okay, and this year, I'm pretty sure we can 3 to 4x the business once again. So you go from a 400 uh, to a 1.5 mil ref for the year. Okay, and so like, if you think about it, right, you're just playing a game. You're just trying to go big, big, bigger and bigger, right? But most of the time, people, uh, they, they don't stick to it long enough for them to see this growth right here. Okay, and this is generally where you see the, the, the companies that grow very fast. They're the, the hockey stick companies, right? The ones that are just flat, 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 and then they just boom, they just go up like that. And most of the time, because we are in an online space, we are an exponential uh, market, right? People cannot fathom exponential, right? That's why, for example, Tesla stock, for example, people don't understand why it goes up like this, right? Because they don't understand. It's like the more people use it, the more people talk about it, the more people invest in it, and then just boom, it goes up, okay? So it's, it's, it's the same thing for e-commerce, right? And that is why um, if, you are in, if you are facing difficulty right now, just, just don't quit, really. Just, if, if you don't quit, right, you will win. Because if you quit, you just lose, yeah, if, if that makes sense. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, but yeah, if you're running a business right now, right, think of it as in years. Are we, you know, are we growing as a business year on year? Okay, and that, that should be your metric of success, stuff like that. Okay, okay, yeah, as I said before, uh, if you stick to one thing for three years, right, um, usually you'll win because number one, usually everyone quits. Okay, if you realize, right, if you see the people in the space, for example, you don't see them anymore because usually everyone quits, they go to another space, right? I have friends who uh, quit, for example, then they go into NFTs, stuff like that, etc., etc. So um, it's actually not too difficult if you just stick to one thing and you, you never, never quit, okay? Number two is like, there's no way you won't win, okay? What I mean by this is like, imagine every single day you wake up for like, you know, in one year's time, 365 days, you work on the exact same problem. At the end of the year, right, I'm pretty sure you are very, very, advanced and versed in that problem, right? You are the number one expert in the field in the world for that problem, right? Because you, you, you put all your attention and energy into that problem. So you probably know more than everybody else in the space, if that makes sense, okay? The problem is most people don't have enough focus to actually, you know, stick at a problem and just continuously focus on one problem and solving it for long periods of time. So I give you the analogy of, for example, like Amazon, right? They've been trying to build fulfillment centers over time, right? The first time uh, uh, Bezos, Jeff, right? He built his uh, Amazon, his warehouse. He doesn't know how to build, right? And then he faces some problems and then he just built and built and built. And now they have like thousands of fulfillment centers and stuff around the world and stuff, right? And they just replicate that model and basically make it as good as possible. So if you think about it, Amazon is the best in the world at producing and creating fulfillment centers. There's no other company in the world. There's no person in the world that is better at creating fulfillment centers than, than Jeff. 
right? So, so from the same way, right? Even in the e-com, whatever it is, no matter what you're selling, right? If you know the product so well, right? You know the market and industry much better than everybody else. Technically, that is your competitive advantage as well, okay? Uh, number three is you will know the pro- Yeah, like I said, you will know the problem more than anybody else, okay? So um, especially when you are uh, growing your company at first, right? Uh, I think I, I created a video last time where I mentioned to you, like, focus on revenue, not profits, okay? A lot of the times, right? Okay, uh, if you go from a situation where you're broke, and then you, you come into business. Obviously, uh, that one, you, you need to focus on profit, for example, right? But if you have a job, right? If you have some savings, for example, uh, you really need to focus on revenue. And the reason why is because you need to have proof of model that people actually want to buy your product. If you understand, right? If you know that, uh, for example, people buy the product, people actually are willing to give you money for this thing, right? You shouldn't be too worried because in the future, you can just refine that process, right? Their revenue can become profit over time, right? But if you don't even have... Uh, revenue in the first place, right? Then there's no point talking about anything else. So that is why uh, it's more important to try to focus on revenue first. You want to try to get that hockey stick, that, that growth curve up. Once you get the growth curve up, right, you already have money. When you have money, right, you can hire smarter people than you and then they can figure out how to squeeze out profit, how to increase and improve the business model, blah, 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 stuff like that, okay? Uh, a lot of the times, right, people don't make like a lot, a lot of money uh, on uh, profits, okay? So what I mean by that is that uh, if you see all the biggest companies in the world, uh, if you see their financial statements, right, they don't make money uh, necessarily from the actual profit of the business. So the business could be losing like uh, $300 million per year, but the, the company is worth like $12 billion. So on paper, the guy is worth $7 billion, but the company is losing money. So, so how is that the case? And the reason why is because the money is made on equity. The money is not made by profits. Okay, but the thing is, in the make money space, the make money online, e-commerce, Shopify, dropshipping space, right? Uh, people think that, uh, you're making money by profits, which is abs- actually the, the wrong thing to do. Okay, you actually make money when you sell the business. Okay, so that is why a lot of people, the people in the space, right, they cap out. They never scale beyond a certain uh, revenue level because they, they don't get it. They just don't get it. And they play a different game. Okay, so just, just to let you know, um, you got you to gotta be doing this. You got to be building equity, not profits. Okay, if you care about profit, right, um, you probably won't survive because you, you can't reinvest. Okay. So, okay, let me show you what are the problems that a lot of brands are facing at this point in time. Okay, so number one is like margin squeezing inflation. So let, let me explain to you what's happening in the macro environment, okay? So like raw materials are going up. COVID is happening, okay? China is shutting down every city that ha- uh, COVID happens. So if I want to manufacture uh, a water bottle or whatever it is, right, there's raw materials that the factory needs to get, right? And so that is squeezing, that is squeezing the margin because imagine usually it costs $2 to create the, this water bottle, for example, right? Normally it costs $2 to make this thing. Right now it costs $4. So that it means that the profit margins are shrinking, which means that the cost has to be passed to the customer as well. So everything is going to be affected, right? Your, your profit margins, your gross margin is going to be decreased. And not only that, it's going to put a lot of strain on the supply chain, okay? And that's the number two, right? The supply chain, it's hard to manufacture, okay? So when everything is closed, everything is hard to manufacture and stuff like that, right? the suppliers who actually can produce something will jack up the price, okay? So these two things come in hand. Okay, number three, if you see uh, Facebook, Google, Apple, right? The iOS thing is actually a a big deal. The iOS 14 stuff is a big deal to Facebook. Uh, And the reason why is because um, Apple just has so many users on their phone. A lot of people use the iPhone. So if you have a lower ROI on your advertising campaigns, you're gonna affect everything in, in in the actual business itself. Okay, so companies who build their, their, their business based on the advertising channel, for example, if you get a lower ROI, right, everything else is going to be affected, okay? And then number four, the big dogs are here, okay? So I'm going to explain to you what this means because most people on YouTube don't talk about this at all um, and hopefully you understand the situation, okay? So the, the problem with, uh, it's not even in e-commerce, I'm pretty sure it's in every single space, okay? Is that the big dogs are here. So who are the big dogs? The big dogs are the guys who have, who are generally companies who are venture funded. So what I mean by that is that uh, the companies who are fast growing, they raise a lot of money as a startup, for example. So in, in their cash, in their bank account, right, they have tons of money to burn. They have tons of money to throw at Facebook and Google ads, and you don't, okay? So these, these guys, right, generally, they are public companies, they are well-funded, they have more money, they're faster, they're smarter than you and me, okay? So like in terms of that, you, you, are, you, are, you should be scared because these guys know, how, know what to do, okay? Not only that, they're probably operating in the same markets as you. Okay, so if they are in the same advertising channel as you, they have more money, uh, they, they move faster than you, what makes you think you can uh, basically out-compete them? Okay, they also have a longer uh, horizon than us. So they actually don't care if their ROAS on Facebook is like 0.5. Okay, if you're not profitable, for example, on Facebook, you're basically screwed, right? But they actually don't care. 
these guys just dump money into Facebook and they just uh, let it be. Let, let, let the campaign run. They don't care. Okay, because they, they know that lifetime value is more than... As long as the lifetime value is more than the cost acquisition, they're going to be in the green. They, they, they honestly don't care. And not only that, if they continuously lose money and they don't have enough money in the bank, they can go to the public markets. They can raise uh, money once again and then money just comes into their bank account. So they technically um, can kill anybody if they, if they wanted to. Okay, that is why you must think about how to survive slash how to thrive or like what you actually should do in this situation. Okay, so uh, let me show you. Okay, so what is still working in e-commerce nowadays? Uh, this is my perspective. You could have another perspective of your experience and stuff like that. But I'm I'm running campaigns every single day. So this is what uh, just let, let you know. Okay, so mass market messaging that is effective amongst all the people that you target. So what I mean by this is that, uh, for example, if you put down an ad copy, that is working and stuff like that. If it is not mass market messaging, it's quite difficult to monetize. Okay, so if you're selling something, uh, for example, like once again, this water bottle, if this water bottle here, right, uh, every single person that you touch on your ad, for example, you cannot extract money from them, it's very, very difficult to scale because uh, a lot of the times is that because the iOS inaccuracies is decreased, for example, the ROI on the campaigns is decreased. So if you're going into very, very niche markets, for example, uh, it could be good or it could be bad, but what, or what what I'm saying is that basically your cost of advertising is going to go through the roof if it's not mass market appeal. Okay, so uh, the mass market appeal products and the viral products are the ones that are generally working better. Okay, number two is that, yeah, every person you can hit, you can extract and monetize. Uh, exactly the same point, sorry. Yep, and number three is that something that incentivizes the person to buy based on trends. Okay, so obviously if you can, if there's a trend in the market, for example, you can put ad copy in, in that basically allows it to scale because it's basically cheaper to acquire attention. Okay, and so the, the, the cheaper the attention, the cheaper your ads as well. Okay, simple. All right, okay. So uh, if you see Facebook and Google, for example, if you see their earnings, right, um, which is basically their financial statements, okay, uh, iOS, the iOS 14 stuff is really affecting Facebook. Okay, and you might be asking, does Facebook work in 2022? Yes, it, it still does. They still have 2 uh, billion users. Okay, so 2 billion is, is, is <laughs> it's 2 billion, like, come on, like, you know what I mean? So does Google work? Yes, it does. Okay, but the thing is, on Google, you still cannot uh, really differentiate your product uh, because everything is a Google ad. It's a search-based ad, right? It's, it's, you're just seeing text, for example. Okay, so Facebook is still a very, very viable acquisition channel. Okay, your product just needs to be exciting, different, Okay, you need to create video ads. It's very, very difficult to create photo ads nowadays. Um, and then like funny ads still work. If you are really good at copywriting, it's still good, right? But then, um, yeah, I, I feel that it, it, in order to just reduce your cost of acquisition, you need to be different from other people. I won't say better. You don't have to be better. You need to be different. If you are different, right, the more you stand out, the lower your cost per clicks. So it's generally easier to advertise. That's, that's the experience that I have. Okay, and don't think that this is only for pure like D two C e commerce. You can even do this for like B two B e commerce and stuff like that. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, so which which are the brands who will basically survive and thrive in this uh, economy and stuff like that? Okay, so the ones that are like extreme USP. So for example, if you sell chocolate, everybody sells chocolate. But imagine you sell like protein chocolate. Okay, that's something that I've never heard of before. Right, so that's an extreme. That's a unique selling point. Okay, another thing that won't die, I feel, is the extremely high ticket stuff. So the extremely high ticket stuff is uh, the ones that are you know selling for over a thousand dollars, for example, and they normally have a back end. So the lifetime value of the customer is probably like five, six k, twenty k stuff like that. The stuff that's super high ticket, right? Uh, the Facebook stuff is not affecting them at all. Okay, because they, they don't care. They can just dump money into Facebook and they'll still be profitable. Okay, that's the the second thing. And then the third alone thing is that the product alone, right? Uh, if if you acquire one customer, for example, so just now I showed you on Facebook that we acquire a customer for 30 bucks, right? $30 we spend to acquire one customer to try our products, for, for example, right? So uh, if the product itself, if they the, the customer buys, consumes the product, for example, right? And it's good enough for that customer to recommend the product to another customer, you usually, your, your company is okay. Your company will survive, okay? Because if you acquire one customer, just now you saw there were 527 customers uh, that were actually being produced from our ads, right? Those 527, uh, possibly they will refer 500 more people. So technically, I'm buying the equity of a thousand customers, but I'm paying for 500. Does that make sense? It's basically, you know, uh, what, what do they call it? They call it like viral acquisition loop, stuff like that, okay? So these are, these are the type of companies uh, who will survive. If you're not doing either one of these things, right? Uh, I find it's very, very difficult nowadays, or it's like not worth it. It's not worth it to do it if you don't have either one of these things. So, in terms of like 
uh, e-com stores, like people keep pushing e-com, 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 right? If, if you're not good at business in general, right? If you're not good in business, you're not going to survive in e-com. It, it's basically the same thing. It's just online transactions. That's all. Okay. So uh, just, just be a better entrepreneur, be a better business is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, let me show. Okay. So uh, the final part of my presentation and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Google ads. Okay. If you have a good offer, pricing, uh, unique selling point and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming you already have this. Okay. Google ads is still a very viable channel. Okay. Facebook is still very viable, but I have a lot of other videos on the channel that talk about it. Okay. On Google ads, let me show you what I've been doing uh, that I've seen uh, so far. Okay. A lot, a lot of times in the past, uh, I've learned about a uh, manual bid, stuff like that. Manual bid gives you a lot of control. I think Charlie Brand uh, uses to use it, stuff like that. Okay. But a manual bid, sometimes it gets a bit expensive. Or if you are in a very, very tight niche, for example, there's very little search volume and stuff like that. Okay, so what I normally like to do nowadays is I start off with a maximized click. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming you have a new, you have a brand new Google ad account, for example, or if you have a, a relatively young business, okay, you still can start with maximized clicks. Okay, so maximized clicks, why I like it is because you want to try to open up uh, your top of funnel as much as possible. Okay, this is how you increase your customer base. You want to go into cold traffic and try to convert them. Okay, cold traffic is the hardest thing ever. It's like trying to attract and date a girl that you've never, uh, sorry, that you've never met before, right? Imagine you go to school or whatever, and then you 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 meet the girl the first time, and you're trying to court her, and you're trying to uh, get her to be your boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever. Okay, yeah, and so that is like uh, converting cold customers is the most difficult thing. So you want to cast your net as big as possible, right? You want to maximize the clicks. Okay, as once the click comes onto your site, because you you know for a fact they have search intent, for example, you know they're qualified traffic, okay? Once you know you, they have that, right? Then you see how many conversions come in, okay? I'm assuming good offer, pricing, USP is already there, okay? And then after around 14 days or so, Google is definitely much slower than Facebook. You need to give it time to breathe because uh, sometimes it overspends, sometimes it underspends, okay? So you need to give it time to breathe. Um, you can go into broad match, okay? In the past, I was quite scared to go into broad match. I was just doing phrase and exact match. But I feel, I think, uh, broad match, you still can open up your top of funnel and, you know, bring traffic in as much as possible. Okay? So the keywords, right, that start converting after 14 days, and then you can just change it to maximize conversions. Okay? So you go from maximize clicks to maximize conversions, and then you want to start identifying uh, the keywords that have converted in the past from maximize clicks. Right? So uh, at the start, launch uh, max clicks, right? After 14 days, see conversions come in, see keywords that are converting, change that to maximize conversions, and then you start identifying the converting keywords. So for example, uh, let's see, protein chocolate, right? So protein chocolate is a keyword, uh, it starts converting, right? You take that keyword, you probably want to branch out into another campaign and launch it as maximize conversions, and then you run that specific keyword for there, okay? And so like this is a risk-free way technically because you're going out in there, you're seeing what works and what doesn't, and then you take the whatever's working and then you just duplicate it whatsoever. Okay, a lot of the times it's just people quit too early. When you quit too early, you're not going to see anything, any, any results. Okay, so uh, just to tell you that. Okay, and afterwards, you can do target ROAS as well. Okay, so hopefully, like this is a very, very simple strategy. Uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go and watch my other videos on this channel. Okay, but it's, uh, it's Google Ads. It's not rocket science. Okay, it's driving qualified traffic to an offer and landing page. And basically, you're just seeing the conversions to and fro, to and fro, okay? Uh, Google is obviously uh, much more stable than Facebook sometimes. Um, the thing is, there are some days where you can be spending money and see zero conversions at all, okay? So don't think of it as a complete replacement and stuff like that, right? Google is still uh, sometimes on some days, it just doesn't get conversion, okay? This could be a multitude of different factors, okay? Ken, okay. So that is pretty much it from me for this video. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I know I'm not very active on the channel and stuff like that, uh, but hopefully you hope, uh, enjoyed this uh, video and given it some thought as well. I know I, I don't create uh, YouTube-friendly videos technically because a lot of it is not mass market, right? I know that if you're watching this, you're probably an advanced uh, marketer and stuff like that, but uh, hopefully you, you get real value, right? Not like some other videos and stuff like that. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, if you want, check out the links below and stuff. Um, yeah, I'll put some links if you want to see or whatever. And then, um, yep, hope to see you soon. And yeah, okay.